SPM. I hope everybody is fit and fine to you know, attend this session. Before we start, like you know, uh, I, Ms. Ms. Bum, social studies teacher, has arranged this talk and as an expert talk for our students. We are going through a session or a lesson called Money and Credit, which is, uh, I feel, better, or could be better explained by a person who actually works in that particular field. Okay, today with the guidance of our esteemed principal and a very special guest of honor, our expert speaker, Mr. Yogesh Karnarkar, we would like to start the program with this note. Before we start, I would request our principal to present a flower as a token of gratitude to Mr. Yogesh Karnarkar. I would also call Ms. Radha Ma'am. I am delighted to have Mr. Yogesh Karmarkar. He is a state manager of Kotak Mahindra, who has warmly accepted our invitation in a very short notice to speak to all, uh, all of us about a very important topic. We are, learner, we are learning the topic money and credit in a syllabus and I must say that it is also a very crucial talk. It's a very important talk in our life. We deal with money every every day and as we grow and we are earning, going to earn money, right? We are going to earn money. Uh, money is a very important concept in our life, right? Since we wake up in the morning and we go to sleep, we have something to spend. Don't we agree to it? Yes or no children? Yes. Like everything is dependent nowadays on money, so it's a very important topic and content to be understood by our students itself. We must be aware of the importance of the management and so we have with us someone who would best be example of it and who would explain us in the deep what money exactly works and how it works. We have some following points to be included in our topic, that is money as a medium of exchange, deposit with bank, check payment, loan activities of the bank. Now without any further delay, I would, I would request our sir to please take the mic and carry over the book. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I am audible, loud and clear. So I think that this session is not like a just a one way session. That in the beginning of the session only I am talking about because I did some earlier banking related sessions with some college students and all and it was more of an interactive so I would like to have some interactions with you. So first thing is that thank you for inviting me uh, for just giving my thoughts to you. So I am not an economist or expert in uh, banking or in technical terms but since I am working in banking industry since last 20 years so I think that I would like to share my thoughts, whatever I learned since I joined the bank and how the transformation has happened since last 20 years in banking industry. So, the age that you are living right now, I think it is just the beginning. And uh, the, whenever I was in college or we learned at a graduation level, we just had some banking and insurance topic over there and there was not much involvement actually of the banking in your life. But right now, since you are in the school, in the beginning, in the first or second standard, whatever that the money which is coming to the school and whatever the scholarships and everything which is coming to you, that are rooted through the banking only. So banking becomes an inevitable part of your life right now. Just like it is a basic need, just like food, shelter and everything, right now bank is I think the fourth pillar that you, everyone has to go through the banking only. So, before going ahead with that, so I have gone through your syllabus, so I am not your teacher, so I don't like to touch every point, whatever is included in your syllabus. But I will touch certain, some of the points, wherever I would like to explore something, which are mentioned over there in very uh, crisp and I, I, in very short uh, meaning, I think. So, 
Before going ahead, just I would like to ask you one question. How many of you have the bank accounts? Anywhere, I am not asking about my particular bank. <laughs> okay, so how many of you have gone to the bank actually? <clears throat> so all have visited bank. I think last 15 days some of your uh, friends have visited my bank also to understand what is ex exactly happening at the ground level. So good part is that most of you have the, your accounts. Have you ever individually operated your accounts? No? Anybody? Your parents are operating. So basic rule I think you would have understand, understood that banking, once you attain the age of majority then you will have the rights of banking at your own. You just have your account, but right now you are not having your rights to operate that account. So this is the basic of the banking. You start from here. So for any kind of banking business, once you attain the age of majority, then transactions will start at your own, whether it is a deposit or whether it is a loans or anything. Banking is a basic business of accepting deposits and lending the money. It's nothing like that. So that is a basic rule of banking. So Reserve Bank is the apex bank who controls all these commercial schedule and all cooperative banks. Everything, every money which is routed, circulated into the country, which is governed, regulated and monitored. Both three things are very important because ultimately the currency that I can't print the currency at my home. So these basic things which I am going to tell you is that I will explain you the basic banking requirements to get into the banking business. I will touch some of the points whether how the credit is happening, assessment is happening. I am not going into the technical details because since last 20 years I am trying to learn that how these things are happening and just I am aware about 10% of the banking. So it is very vast subject, there are different aspects. So basically, uh, it is a CD ratio. Have you heard? I am talking about some technical terms. You can just Google it after this session. So you will come to know about the details, whatever I am talking about. So CD ratio is credit deposit ratio. I think this is the base of the banking business. So whatever the deposits which I get and how much I am lending out of that deposits. So these are the basic functions. And the ratio which is maintained, CD ratio, which will reflect the health of the bank and economy overall. There are multiple types of banks. It is a scheduled commercial banks, then private sector banks, cooperative banks, regional rural banks, cooperative credit societies, self-help groups, then there is an unorganized sector also, money lenders also, those who are lending into the market. Though it is legal, illegal, that is the latter part, but this is the parallel economy which is happening in India, India and everywhere. So basically the function of the bank is that to accept the deposits and to lend the money. And the difference between that, I borrow some money and I lend some money. So how? what is the logic behind that? I need to earn something out of that. So the difference between the interest, that is a net interest margin, whatever we pay NIM, that is the earning for the bank. So I borrow at 10% and I lend, lend at 12%. So 2%. On a broader way I am talking about, there are a lot of things which are there. Capital borrowing, capital raising is there. Cost of funds is there. So I am not touching. Means I intend to tell you something different, but uh, it will take another one hour for this. So the net interest which I am getting, that is my profit. Deposit raising is one of the critical parameter. Reserve Bank is monitoring all these deposits and lending activities. There are certain ratios, liquidity ratios, CRR ratios, cash reserve ratios. If I have a capital of 100 rupees, then I have to maintain minimum 15 rupees out of that with the reserve bank as a liquidity ratio. So if the, it is a kind of demand deposit, basically it is a demand deposit. If the customer asks that 
give my money back then i have to keep some money in my pocket to refund that money to the customer in a very simple language i, I can tell you so for that purpose rbi keeps some money out of the deposits which are collected by the banks with them and whenever that customer means be as a customer demands with the bank then bank has to pay back that money so for that some liquidity has to be maintained with the banks all the money which is kept into the banks cannot be reinvested so that is the basic reason that crr is maintained slr is there statutory liquidity ratios are there then you must have heard about that repo rate reverse repo rate i am not talking about much on that you just check it on the google what is real because it is equally important to understand whenever i am talking about your deposit rates are increasing your loan rates are increasing it is directly proportional to your this repo rate and reverse repo rate so once the repo rate are increase automatically your loans and all other rates are so to for the correct if if they want to shrink the liquidity they will uh, increase the repo rate and on the other side they will decrease the repo rate so banks keep some money with rbi rbi give some interest on that deposits to the regular banks so that is related to their repo rates so how this why i am taking uh, much uh, focus on this repo rates and all other because everything which is related into the deposits and lending related to this repo rates only in technical terms whenever we collect the deposits for as a commercial banks or any psu banks or psu banks in the sense public sector undertaking which are governed and owned by the government of india just like the bank of india state bank of india punjab national bank 14 15 psus are there two three years back some of the psus were merged and they become the one entity so government has some plans on rationalization of the psu banks numbers i work with kotak mahindra bank so it is a public it is not a psu bank it is a scheduled commercial bank which is included in the schedule 2 of the reserve bank of india 1934 which is a act so scheduled commercial banks specifically which are 100% government uh, governed by the rbi there are another regional rural banks which are also governed by state sponsored government sponsored banks and government they have the stakes into this regional rural banks they have a huge impact in the rural credit specifically then there are cooperative societies there are number of cooperative societies into our region specifically in maharashtra it has a huge impact of cooperative credit society and cooperative banks then on an organized sector i am not talking much about it is not uh, the for right forum but i i have gone through your syllabus so there it has there mention that there is a, a money lender which we we call it as so that is a money lender individual lending is also happening but i am not covering that topic right now so basically whenever the banking whenever you enter into the banking business there are different kinds of demand deposits then some kind of bonds or other kind of deposits i am not going into that detail but we will talk only about the demand deposits and how it works and what is the impact on your daily needs on that so whenever we keep something keep money into the banking what we get can somebody answer me any term you understand if i keep some money with the bank anything we get on that money ya yeah? right so interest is the thing which i pay and bank also pay to me so again i am coming to the i am correlating to to the same point i am keeping some deposits and bank lets and they charge interest 
So I am paying the interest, I am paying to the customer. The difference between that interest is the profit for the bank. So how it is defined? It is defined basis on some ratios. That is a prime lending rate bank decides on their prime lending rate. That below these rates, I can't lend. Below this, I can't accept deposits. Then there are new MCLR ratios are also there. Marginal lending rates, which are they also been decided by the board of directors every month by the bank. And on that basis, these interest interest rates are fluctuating. So everything which is going to happen which is happening into the banking, which is 90% of the business, which is linked to this MCLR and PLR ratios. PLR basically interest rates. <clears throat> because margins are set on these basic two rates. There are different kind of demand deposits, term deposits. Term deposits and saving account deposits are the demand deposits. So whenever you are going to the bank, you are depositing your small money into the bank. It has to be you have to open the account that you are depositing that money into your account. And whenever you need that money, you can withdraw it by the various means. <clears throat> so what are these means? Can anybody answer my question? It is in your syllabus only. Have you ever gone to the ATM? Yes. Anybody has that ATM card? Are you aware about that? You get the ATM card? Because you are I think on 9th and 10th students. So once you attain the age of 12, you will get your independent ATM card. So check with your parents, I am not asking you. <laughs> but there is a possibility that they must have opted that. But there is an option, you can do your own transactions at the bank with your ATM. So can somebody tell me how can I withdraw some money from the bank, any kind, any kind. I answered your one question already, ATM, I have explained you. What is the alternate way? Right. Then? Right. Then? Answer it, whether it is a wrong or right, that is fine. <coughs> So right, it's a check, ATM, withdraw slip is there. Then there are some another instruments. Basically it is governed by the Negotiable Instrument Act. All these whatever check, demand drafts, LCs, then uh, bills of uh, exchange, these are governed by the Negotiable Instrument Act. All the banking, almost all is uh, governed by this negotiable instrument act. Whatever is there is written, we are fine to do that. We have to adhere to the rules and regulations which are there into the negotiable instrument. So, checks is a very common thing which most of the traders and common person is using to transact into the regular banking business. 10, 15 years back, RTGS system was established. When I joined the bank at that moment, RTGS was not there even. It's not a long back story, even 20 years back it was not there. <clears throat> so right now there are NEFT RTGS, so real time cross settlement. What is it is happening? It is a just like an electronic mode of transferring the money from one bank to another bank. So all these activities are not only handled by the RBI, there is a subsidiary of RBI that is a NPCI, National Payment Corporation of India, who handles all these activities like your NEFT, RTGS, your UPI payments. How many of you have heard GP? Everybody knows GP. So you are almost there into the banking if you are aware about the GP. So you are using the banking, so you do, need not to carry the checkbook with you, right? What is that? It is also the means that you can transfer money from one or you can receive the money from someone. So you know the GP but you don't know that the banking means you don't know about your accounts. So GP, is it the bank GP? 
she pays the bank or not it's just like a interface which is that is a upi unified payment interface is the system which is monitored and handled by the npc a national payment corporation gpay is one of the mediator one of the aggregator you can say like that who collects the money on behalf of you and it tra they transfer to someone so there are phone pay gpay every bank has their upi portal so you can use that port and there is a bheem which is a government owned upi interface so there are multiple companies right now i think amazon pay is also there so these are means these are aggregators wallets account these are not banks they are using the banks ultimately your money is getting deposited into the banks but upi is very effective and fastest growing means of payments i don't remember the exact numbers you can just check on crores of transactions on daily basis which are happening on the upi so all 20 years back or 15 years back or 50 years back modes which we were using these are out of the i think uh, you can say like that the percentage of usage of these earlier modes which we were using into the bank are almost all negligible how the upi works it is in the similar way electronically you collect money in the same way npci some server they aggregate some money they deposit it into the bank if someone asks that money then immediately it is happening and it is fraction of seconds happening so how the systems are developed how the transformation has happened 20 years back 15 years back everything was manual right everything is digital everything is digital means some of the banks some of the apps which are facilitating you to open your accounts to transfer money to uh, buy something on your portals then uh, investments are there i'm touching that point again with the investment part i don't know how much time i have 15 minutes more okay so i will cover some credit part also so along with this banking basically i am touching the point on that how the payments are happening how the collection of deposits are happening apart from this lending how many of you are aware about the home loan which is a simplest form of uh, loans everybody must have heard home loan anybody has heard okay so this is a very common type of loan which maximum customers buyers are availing through the banks because it is a basic need of the person home okay there are certain kind of mortgages happening are you aware about this term mortgage pledge have you heard about that manappuram gold gold loans or anybody has heard that so i am not uh, advertising of manappuram gold i am just because this is a prominent is advertising is happening everywhere so what is that gold loan very common why it is very easy there is a pledge and mortgage is happening with the immovable property basic difference so there are multiple kinds of loans banks are giving letter of credit is there they are basis on the basis of some tangible assets and intangible assets again the some complicated terms i am touching but gold is a tangible asset so you are pledging the gold with the bank and you are borrowing the money from the bank so what is the difference the bank keeps that gold with you the value of the gold whatever is that for rupees 1000 bank is giving you 800 800 rupees against that gold they keep some margin with them so in case of any fluctuation if the value of the gold is getting decrease then bank is safeguarded on the similar way all kinds of lending is happening into the bank 
in the similar way. I have just explained you the gold loan, which is the simplest form of loan that you can understand in a better way. So all kinds of loan which are backed by the security. What is that backed by the security? It means that if the bank is giving something to you, what is the guarantee that you will repay that money to the bank? If you fail to repay the money, bank will be at a loss. Who will bear that loss? There are multiple investors into the bank and they will ask the, they will raise the question that you are doing the loss making business and RBI will ask to close the banking business. So that are the impacts. You must have heard 2-3 years back some of the banks were actioned by the RBI, their inconsistency with their lending. So RBI has asked to close the banking business. So what, why it has happened? Because their CD ratio was not matching and they have led to customers which are which were not eligible. What is that eligible? Means I have an earning of 100 rupees per day and I am borrowing something 10 lakhs rupees of loan. How can I repay that loan? Because I have to pay the principal amount plus interest. But my actual receipts are lesser than whatever is that my monthly installment. Then how, how can I repay that? For that purpose, bank is keeping some security with them, which is in kind of immovable property. It is kind of some liquid collateral, liquid collateral in the sense fixed deposits, some of your insurance policies, mutual funds, or any kind of bonds. They are keeping as a security with them. So in case if the repayment is not happening at regular intervals or if you fail to do that, bank will have the charge on that security. They will sell off that security and bank will recover that money from them. But basic banking agenda is not to sell the property and to earn the money. It is the last option which is with the bank if they don't recover through the repayment, regular repayment, then it is the last option for the bank to sell the securities and to recover the money. So what are the basic functions of the bank? They are lending to the crops, they are lending to the industries, they are lending as a personal loans, they are financing for the vehicles, they are financing for the home loans, they are financing for the construction equipments, then there is a foreign uh, currency transactions, hedging is there, so which is carried out by all the treasury of the bank. So just like uh, if you have the school, then some whatever the collections and all other things, fees and all, there is a cash department. In similar way, there is a treasury with the bank who handles all these banks money, they deal with the banks money. So, again I am not touching that forex currency and everything, it is a very vast subject. There are different kind of forex transactions which are happening through the bank. RBI is governing everything because ultimately you have to control on your forex reserves. Have you heard anything about your forex reserves? Any news? You just monitor one because I got this opportunity to talk with you. You just monitor on your newspapers. Continuously it is coming that our Indian forest reserves are going down, forex reserves are going up. Why it is happening? Because our rupee is getting stronger. So there are different things on foreign exchange. So banks are earning through these foreign exchange transactions also. Foreign exchange uh, foreign currency loans also to the exporters. How these loans are given? Basically, there are two, three uh, basic checks on this. Bank will assess your financials, financials that is your income tax returns or your cash flow through your banking. They will check your local, uh, I think, some uh, references. Whether there is an intentional, you have the intention of fraudulent intention, 
not to repay some people have that so bank checks that also along with your financials then there is a technical team of the bank who checks the property which is offered which is fit or whether it is Ill illegal then if it is illegal bank is not in a position to take that property as an a security because ultimately they can't sell that property then there is a credit there is a credit person is there who evaluates correlates all these things and the decision happened whether the customer is eligible for certain kind of loans which are demanded by the customer so this is the simplest process i am explaining you there are a lot of technical things there are some ratios which are monitored civil checks this is the concept just listen to this civil checks it is very important word i am talking about in your future everyone has to maintain that civil record clear unless and until that civil record is not up to the mark you will not get any loan in future because everything is going to be digital if you have the account once you attend the age of majority if you are using your app of any of the bank you can check your own civil record ideally it has to be about 750 why it is happening civil check is one of the key parameters in today's banking if you are not meant, if you are not having that particular civil score you will not get any kind of loan yeah yeah it is not in minus in that case bank consider that yeah, yeah definitely it should not be the negative in the sense if you are not aware of any kind of loan that is fine then then that condition is not applying but if there is a regular default on that that civil court in your civil report everything is reflected for last 12 months if anybody has not paid any installment then your civil code is the civil score is reflecting everything no that is a different kind of loan which is unsecured loan yeah even for the gold loan civil score is not referred your civil score is getting hampered No, I am not getting you. No, that is different. Right off is a different. For an individual, I am talking about, if you are talking about the individual, right of decision there are multiple tribunals nclt and all other things are uh, there means there is a mechanism specifically for these uh, corporate loans nclt is there also they are maintaining this national tribunal is there it is subject to the board policy it is not a thumb rule it is not a rbi rule why i am telling you it is a i will discuss it with you separately there is a pp declaration particularly into the form because everything if if it is a politically exposed per, uh, person it is a mandate by the i mandate by the rbi that to mention specifically whether why it is happening ultimately the risk profiling is happening at the base level it is not only political exposure if you are into the police also then we also consider that it is a high risk. Why? Because whenever any banker goes to his home to recover the money, the possibility is that he will force that, he will use his position that and not to repay. So that risk categorization is happening. I will explain you in detail because whenever you are even opening the account, it is not only for the loans. In your account opening form, your income level, your profession, everything is there and once you input over there into the system, automatically risk categorization is happening at the back end. So it is a medium risk, high risk, low risk. There are three types of profiling is happening at the bank. If your transactions are inconsistent with whatever your profile, if you are a teacher, if you are earning a salary of rupees 1 lakh rupees and all of a sudden your account got 
some money of 50 lakhs rupees, your account will get blocked immediately. Bank will consider that it is a not a legitimate money or you are doing something fraudulent activities. So you have to explain that if you have sold something, or your properties, you have to submit the papers to the bank. You have to show the transactions and then only bank will unfreeze. So that kind of monitoring is happening right now. Earlier it was not there, but everything is online right now. So in the similar way, PEP is little bit risky because you know that I am not going to tell you on this platform. So there are another risk categorization. Along with the PEP, there are also another risk categorization. There is a banned list also with the banks available. Similar, some names have been already been provided to the banks that you can't open the accounts. So that is, I tell you in the beginning itself that banking, I can't tell you in 45 minutes. Since last 20 years, I am trying to understand what is the banking and just I am not even aware about 2% of the bank. There are multiple aspects. There are multiple aspects. So I was just referring to the sum credit. So regional rural banks, cooperative banks, scheduled commercial banks, PSU banks, they are lending whatever they are getting the deposits. Lending ratios, it is different for every bank. Their rates almost are for the PSU banks, their lending rates are similar because their funds cost is lesser than the scheduled other banks. Why? Because they are backed by the government. Most of the funds which are raised by them are the government funds. But on the other side, the scheduled commercial bank, they borrow money, then they have capital, share capital, and some investors, they are investing for particularly some expansion or anything. Again, there are too many technical terms on that. So, how these credits are happening? There are kinds of term loans. For example, if you are buying a car also, they are giving you for 5 years, 7 years. It is a kind of term loan for that. It is just like that you have to repay in certain installments. After 5 years that your entire repayment is happening, then the ownership of the car is getting transferred in your original purchaser. Till then, in a technical term, it is a higher purchase agreement. We are talking about it is a car loan, but actually in technical terms it is a higher purchase agreement. Sorry, I am going in too much details, but <laughs> these, these are the questions which are raised, so I am explaining it to you. In kind of home loan also, ownership is, though you are in possession of the home, but ownership is with the bank. So once you stop repaying your loans, Bank has a full right to take the charge of and to sell off and to recover the money. On another parts, there are trade loans which are CC or OD. If some of you have some family background of in uh, trading activities, check with your parents whether we have any CC or OD. Just try to understand. I am not asking you about the money. So it is a CC or overdraft. What is what is that? Bank will give you certain kind of money, 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs, 50 lakhs of his living. You can use that money, you can transfer that money, bank will charge the interest on monthly basis on the usage of that money. For that collateral, that is the security, collateral is a technical term in banking, security is kept with the bank. There is a possibility on your business transactions, bank will offer you without collateral also up to 20 lakhs, up to 25 lakhs, it depends on your transactions. Then they can keep some of the stocks, if you are a trader of some FMCG goods, FMCG goods in the sense dealer of your paste, then simplest form of mobiles or clothes, they keep charge on your stocks and they lend you money. Another way of is that on storages, warehouse funding is happening. So agriculture is, uh, they keep uh, their crop or into the warehouses and they raise the money. That is a commodity funding is also there. So I'm not going into that details. I'm just telling you these kinds of words which you may refer it later 
you can check into the google what i am talking about then self help groups they are raising the money some in the rural areas uh, female workers are getting together they are raising some money and also they raise the money from the government also they are getting at a very cheaper rate discounted rate for to air uh, to enhance the export facilities government is giving some subsidy on these loans what is the subsidy if the bank is charging 10% the loan government is promoting the business for exports they are giving some 2% subsidy on loan so what is my net interest will be 8% so that is my profit again as a customer as a trader 2% is my profit because that subsidy is borne by the government so it is for the economic booster if you are exporting you are earning the foreign exchange that is a big thing for the as a country so 2% subsidy is given they are directly repaying that 2% interest back to the customer so these are kind different kinds of subsidies also there which are linked to your loans so if you are a regular paying a regular repayment government will give you some subsidy there are multiple central state government schemes which are running throughout the year for some specific kind of workers right now that you must have heard on the radio all everything pm vishwakarma yojana then there is solar first kind of solar uh, installation solar panels for electricity non conventional power generation we talk on that so there is a specific kind of schemes which are designed by the government and which is club with the banking so bank are lending on behalf of the government and government is paying back some subsidy to the customer so ultimately the people are getting benefited though in the on the front banks are lending but ultimately these are some schemes which are run by running by central government and state government so again bank becomes a mediator for this so ultimately lending is happening through the bank but lending is happening by the government actually anything that i am stopping my conversation right now on technical terms because it's a lot of technical terms i have covered in this session i think you must have got bored so i think that we should be on more on a interactive session right now so if you have any questions you can raise it i tried my best to explain you in 30 minutes overall banking i can explain you in detail also i uh, already discussed with uh, your teachers that any time you are welcome to the bank you come to our desk you understand what is exactly happening some of your friends already visited so not necessary through the schools also you can come independently to the banks and you can check what is happening over there i just wanted to tell you something whatever i learned in my career at my graduation definitely it is useful but practically something different commerce students 11 co commerce students are there okay so basic golden rules of uh, accounts three golden rules 11 na golden rule of accounts right now these golden rules we have gone through that but whenever you come into the banking business then you will understand the real sense of that because in software you are just doing the entry for cash deposit what is the second leg of that entry where it is going if your basics are clear you will understand that because right now everything is getting into the system once you enter everything software will give you the balance sheet and everything over there but how that effects are happening the asset for me for my balance sheet cash or bank balance is my asset but for the bank it is a liability for even student i am talking about because la why it is liability i have kept your money with me and any time whenever you demand i have to pay back that money so it is a liability for me and for me it is an asset because that money is will safe with the bank right so this is the thought process that you have to understand it is not only the books and your debit and credit what is the impact of that entry what is the real meaning of what is the real account what is the nominal account you just understand what is the goodwill how it is created it is not only just to solve the problems 
so my sincere request to all of you go through the terms of the banking economy everything go into the detail try to understand the practical things read out the newspapers overall economic conditions transformations are happening i keep learning also because every day there is a change every day there is a change from the rbi and we have to follow the rules and if we don't follow i will be out of the system it is that much strict there is a zero tolerance for any kind of fraud or a any kind of non adherence to the rbi policies zero tolerance sir nft transaction takes almost 2 hours but jpay is very quick so are there any hidden charges like for no 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 it is not a charge basically there is a different systems platforms which are getting used NFT is governed by the RBI. There is a cycle NFT RTJ cycle. There is a certain timing is fixed since uh, seven. Now right now it is a twenty four seven. But after seven pm, your limits will be re reduced for because ultimately it is a bank to bank arrangement. If I am getting the RTJs of five crores, then bank have to keep sir five crores also in my uh, pool account. So there is a se separate clearing mechanism for NFT artists, and that cycle is getting run by the RBI. And NP NPCI is a real-time platform. That is a different because NFT is for any kind of amount you can do the NFT, but RTJs is specifically about two lakhs only. So there is a time specified because bank has to arrange that funds. They have to keep some. Uh, liquidity with them if the another because it is ultimately settlement of the accounts just like i, I have not touched that point how the settlement system is getting through for check settlement earlier it was at the local level right now it is through, through the national grid so if if my outward checks are for for example i am talking about 1 crores of rupees of outward checks means other bank checks are getting deposited into my pool account against that some of my customers have issued checks to some different banks so if these are some 2 crore rupees then i have a short of 1 crore rupees in my pool account then i have to borrow that funds from my treasury there is a reverse situation also on the other side i have excess funds and the demand is lesser then excess funds are remitted to my treasury so definitely now it is there are no hidden charges early up to 2000 rupees for any kind of upi transactions there are no charges 5 lakhs rupees transactions are allowed of upi specifically for uh, medical income tax and I, i think that one other sector whether 5 lakhs rupees per day is a limit otherwise 2 lakhs rupees per day per day charges are there for the credit card and debit card transactions you have if you are doing for upi there are no charges No, absolutely not. I am using since, since last twenty years. I have, I have not been charged for a single rupee till date. If I am following my cycle, credit cycle, ultimately, just understand. If you are not following the process, you will be penalized. If you are not following the credit rules, if you are not repaying it, definitely bank is going to penalize. How they will earn the money? So if you are following the cycle, you will not be charged a single rupee. I am telling you. Very confidently because I am using it personally for last twenty years, and I have been not been charged for a single rupee. That will be also waived off. Why? It is up to your usage. Again, there are categorization of customers. If you are, if you are a premium customer, if your usage is high, there are certain characteristics with your specific credit card. If the usage is above your that limit, your charges are waived off. it is up to the bank to bank and which kind of card you are having i have not touched that credit card and debit card okay. it is again credit card just i am giving you the for your knowledge credit card is another kind of loan also it is a loan temporary arrangement you can say like that over draft
exactly it is up to you whether it is whether you require it i have a limit of 5 lakhs rupees of it my salary is 1 lakh rupees of per month 5 lakh rupees do i spend monthly basis i can't why do i need a 5 lakh rupees of limit i am not spending 5 lakh rupees per month na i don't have that earning with me so i do take that it is illogical because ultimately once you raise your limits again again the same point it is linked to your cbil it will hit you in your cbil your outstanding your credit limit will be shown as 5 lakhs rupees in your cbil so in the beginning itself i told you everything is related to your cbil so even your you are getting defaulted on your credit card it will hit your cbil also if you do the one time settlement for the credit card payment it will hit your cbil so i am it is an advice whatever the charges are there penalties are there you pay that charges but don't do the one time settlement whether it is a loan of 25000 or 20 lakhs rupees don't do one time settlement pay off your account pay off your account otherwise it will reduce your cbil score earlier prepayment i am not talking about prepayment okay. it is a one time settlement it's a on negotiations with the bank any questions yeah it is very complicated process i i'm not going to tell you on this i will explain you it is very complicated you just check up check it refer some books but very important it is very complicated it's not only one parameter that you loan everything if you even if you ask with multiple banks for the loans and banks are refusing your loans then also it will impact it will impact your cbil score so you have not availed your loan but multiple times you are applying for the loans and it's getting rejected because at the back end the banks are running the your cbil score Yeah, but that is not hundred percent authentic. It is not up to date. Anything else? Yeah. Uh, what are the common mistakes done by the customers during the banking process, and like, how can we avoid them? Which kind of mistakes like, you are talking about? Fourteen percent. What type? What type of mistakes customer make? Yeah. Okay. Good. so basically first and foremost things is that while you are opening the account itself you have to give everything clear picture about your profile if it is a inconsistent and you are doing something different transactions bank will block your all channels it is a rbi minded because ultimately there are multiple pml or rules are there pml are money laundering rules are also there so multiple acts banks are bound by multiple regulatory authorities and acts so basic first thing is that you have to do your profiling proper then you have to be very vigilant on your updates on your mobile emails if anything inconsistent transaction which is happening with your amount account banks are giving you the alerts on a regular basis <clears throat> if you ignore that then these are the common mistakes which are happening i have not seen that message very simple answer from the customers banks are alerting you do not share any otp banks are not asking you anything on the phone any kind of information on the phone if you are getting any phishing call you should have ref you should refer it to the bank in person you have to visit to your nearest branch you have to check whether the call call was phishing call or somebody has called you from the bank bank never ask you any kind of your personal details otp on the phone It's good question. I think that I missed out to touch this point. So most common mistakes which are happening as on date that they share their personal details to the unknown person, which is the basic thing. You have to be very alert. Otherwise, common mistakes on writing are wrong account numbers, transfer. These are the common mistakes which are happening over there that can be rectifiable. But If you give some your personal details, your account will be empty within fraction of seconds. Otherwise, there are human errors. Basically, whatever that you are submitting the information, 
bank will alert to that. If you are updating your wrong phone number, your alerts will be uh, sent to your different user. So ultimately, you will be at the loss. If you are writing, uh, scrubbing something on your checks, checks will get rejected. There is another system which is a positive pay system to avoid the fraud banks uh, RBI has initiated. Once you issue the check above rupees 5 lakhs rupees, you have to intimate it through your banking app or by letter or your net banking and you have to intimate it that, that this, is, this is the pay, this is the amount I have issued to so and so amount. If it matches into the system, your check will get honored. Otherwise, it, it, it will be returned. So that is a safeguard which is there. But most of the people are not using these things. They are not referring these guidelines. That is a common mistake sir, that banks are giving so much guidelines for the safe banking, but people are ignoring and casual attitude. That is the basic thing. Everything, whatever you are doing, any Google Pay, whatever, or Google Pay is the medium I told you. Basically, you, we should talk about it is a UPI payment. It's just like a Colgate. Most of the people in the rural area, I need a Colgate rather than it's a toothpaste. Or Bisleri. Just like that, we, we are talking about GPA. It is not GPA, it is a UPN. So don't share your OTP. Don't, you never get any uh, money through your QR. You are paying through the QR. Keep in mind. So, basic common mistakes. I told you in the beginning that first thing is that whenever you are opening the account, give the clear idea about your profile income everything, most of the problems are reduced. If you are not aware, go to the bank, in person, ask questions, take help. We are there to serve you. It is a service industry, basically. Yeah? Sir, we have observed that the, when the interest of the bank increases, the share markets goes down. But if you observe the uh, since uh, few years, the market, uh, especially the Indian market, is going up. Instead, uh, instead it should go down uh, because of the uh, increase in the interest of the bank. Increase in the interest. Increase in the interest, rate. Increase in the interest rate. I I am not getting your question exactly. If the bank interest rate in the sense of on deposits, you are talking about. Yes. If bank interest are get, deposit rates are getting high or low, high. high, then then the share market should go, go down. But instead, the Indian market is going up. No, it is very common statement you are talking about. It is not like that. It is not like that. If you go through the trade right now, last three four years, the investment in the mutual funds and share has gone up almost all ten times. Okay, the basic reason is different. Right now, people at a very young age, uh, college students even using the online platform for trading and all other kinds of investment. So ultimately, more concern for the banks is the deposits. So they are not getting the deposits because returns comparatively on market instruments, that is the shares, mutual fund, everything, which are on higher side, but it is not that much directly related, correlated, directly proportional, you can say like that. Because it depends on the age. If you are senior citizens, more trust, have, they have the trust on the liquid fixed deposits only. They don't want to take risk. We also don't advise them that to put your entire money into the markets. I got your question. Your question is right. But this is not perfectly right. It is not happening in Indian market or anywhere. It's completely, why it is happening? Because for last five years, the trend of the investment has changed. People are more prone to, they are taking the risk and exposing their money with the markets. So the share of the bank deposits are going down. That is the reason. The investment in mutual funds have almost all 10 times in last five years on SIP side also. Where can we start investing? Where can we invest our money and start investing in this age only? You have to start your investment? Yeah? Where can you are a visionary person. <laughs> Very good question. So for your sake of knowledge, I will just explain you. It's a good question. 
uh, I asked you in the beginning how many of you have your accounts with them. So there is a facility that is a recurring deposit facility, RD. You can start it at your own means from your own account. Once you attain the age of majority that is 18, the money will be handled by you, it will be operated by you. Till date, the control over your investments with your parents, but you can start with even small 100 rupees RIT per month with your bank. There is another option that SIP, Systematic Investment Plan and Mutual Fund. You can do it from your investment account at your own name also. If you start it earlier, you will get the best returns. And then what is FD, sir? What, what is, is FD? FD? Fixed deposits. That is a term deposit, that is a demand deposit. Demand deposit, saving account money is a demand deposit. Why it is a demand deposit? Whenever I wanted back that money, I can withdraw that deposit also. That is a premature withdrawal. There is a fixed tenure for that and banks are giving different rates for different tenures. So if I am keeping 1000 rupees for one year, bank is giving you 7.5 rates. If it is for five years, I am, I am bank is giving you 8%. If it is for the six months, bank is giving you 5%. If you need that money within the stipulated period, which is a contract, actually bank is doing a contract with the you. For me, if I am keeping 1000 rupees for 365 days, bank will pay you 8%. For example, if I am breaching the contract within one year, if I need that money, bank will charge you more, they will penalize you 0.5%. They will give you lesser interest than what is contracted earlier. So that is a term deposit, which is a fixed term, which is already been decided at the time of keeping the money with the bank. And on the other side, saving account, there is a this is a demand deposit, wherever you can withdraw the money any time from the bank, wherever you are not getting penalized. Why it is happening? Because of on a term deposit or a fixed deposit, there is a specific rate which is being offered for different tenures. But on the saving, banks are giving you 3.5 to 4 percent on your saving accounts on an, your average daily balance. So it is calculated on your average daily balance, and for term deposit, it is for a specific period. So if you are prematuring your deposits, you will be charged some addition. That is a penalty charge, 0.5 percent something. You got it? Anything else? It's an endless topic. I can keep talking on that and you, you will get boring on that. So, so thank you very much for uh, sharing my thoughts with you. I think I have covered, I have touched certain points which were in my mind. Uh, my intention was not to give you the details about your lesson and all the, everything, but uh, I thought that I have covered something what is expected from you. So thank you very much, yes, uh, Principal Madam, for giving me this opportunity and uh, all students for listening me patiently for the last 45 minutes. Okay, thank you very much. Thank uh, Mr. Karmarkar for coming here and uh, you know telling you about the banking system. Children, banking system is one aspect of financial management. And uh, like uh, when we asked, you know, uh, how can I invest at this age? It's an excellent question. How many of you have heard about Berkshire Hathaway? Who's the owner of Berkshire Hathaway? Do you know? Warren Buffett. Warren Buffet started investing at the age of 11. How old are you? 15. Yes? Okay, so it's, it's very, very interesting. And the world of financial management marketing is so swiftly and drastically changing that uh, recently I read a news that one uh, auto driver in Bangalore has started accepting Bitcoin money. Okay, so it's very interesting if you uh, get into it and you know, till you are a minor, your SIPs can be managed by your parents as uh, such as systematic investment plan. But if you start investing at the age of 20, by the age of 45, you will be a crorepati. 
and uh, you will not have to work and you can retire that's the power of money and you can enjoy your life but misuse like i don't know the exact person but i have heard somewhere that if you are earning 1000 rupees per month then you know 400 should be your investment 300 should be your saving and 300 you should spend so this is how we should uh, tackle money so money should not power you you should know how to use money for your benefit it's very interesting today we have just touched upon banking and sir has really given you very good uh, you know uh, general uh, these things about uh, banking system but uh, of course it's a part of our everyday life and uh, if you learn it in more details and if you are focused i think uh, we need more of uh, more startups india is known for its unicorn isn't it and uh, children at very young age and early age it's all about idea generation now so the more innovative ideas you have the more you will be able to uh, sell your idea and earn from it and uh, you young generation are the hope future hope of the nation so uh, thank you very much i think you must be hungry breakfast time your periods all those things once again sir thank you so much